Hi all. Right. A new game. Um, yeah, I figured we would give this a go. RAF Battle of Britain. 1948. Another John Butterfield game. Um, I'm, I'm, I was not very not sure about this game for quite some time, but um, um, maybe I figured... John Butterfield games are really good. <laughs> I seem to enjoy them all, so um, I should at least give it a try anyway. Um, so we're going to play the Eagle version, which is playing as the Germans. I think that's probably the slightly better of the two. I get the impression that the the Lion version's not quite so good, but um, yeah, I'd, be, I'd get around to giving that a go, I think. But... Um, for a start or something. I try to set this up uh, better. I'm on my other table from what I was doing Omaha Beach on. Um, I'm actually starting to think it might have been better to put it over on that other table, to be honest. Uh, however, well, I'd set it up here because I still had Omaha Beach up and I was messing about and I played a couple of the introduction scenario where you just play one day. Uh, so I played two games, um, I lost the first one, I had, uh, the Allies had five points, the second one had negative five, I want to say it was a draw, the result was a draw anyway, so I lost the first one and I had a draw in the second one. Um, so yeah, not that much experience with it, and uh, I can see there's some, <clears throat> there's definitely some strategies to how you create your raids and what you put in them and obviously there's that element of luck as well dice rolls this time and card draws also um, yeah I'm not sure about the lighting uh, I've lost two of my little bulbs from my light above me <coughs> which they don't get off a, give off a great lot of light but um, they're kind of Strange kind of balls. I'm not sure I'm going to get, go and replace them from, but um, well, I'll, I'll eventually find them. But I've got my other two lights at the side. But it's just this is coming in a bit bright from this side. So, but I wanted to try it. Yeah, see. Um, but I, I moved my other table a wee bit, so I should be able to do something like this. It's not going to be so easy for me to find things and then I had these tables round about the other way and I figured this is quite an important sort of table. This is the combat results. So I put that one there so hopefully we can zoom in and let you see sort of the results and then um, there is quite a lot of charts and tables. The other ones up the top maybe aren't so important. But I can move up. I actually put plate I put some plates here over these so we could just move up a bit and uh, have a look but I'm not 100% sure about the light, but anyway. Um, now, uh, Martin had suggested a <clears throat> look at the Stuka Joe cards. Now, I had, um, when I very first looked at this game, I had come across his videos for the game. Okay, I've, uh, <laughs> I've had some issues printing things out. <laughs> they, they weren't so bad. Uh, no, hang on. Yeah, at first, you can see there's not, um, there was no issues at first, so I carried on printing and uh, just set it up to print everything. And uh, my printer's not the best, um, so the later as we went on, you can see the banding through the card. I mean, it's not a, it's not a huge big deal, but it's not very, not very nice. Uh, this was the very last card that got printed, so it's the worst. It's just a reference card. But on the other side, you can see what's what, I suppose. Um, but I did have quite a struggle getting them printed and then cutting them out. I put them on card, sticky, sticky um paper, and then on a card. But I don't know if I needed. I, I should have just done it on card on both sides and then cut them out. But um, anyway, so. But I've I've realised the light coming along here is putting a shadow. My my thinking was I'm going to put the card in there, but it's right in the shadow, so. So, um, <laughs> that's my wife 
uh, messing about with the dog. <coughs> Have you heard any of that? She calls her a wee ninja. She's a wee black shih tzu. And uh, she does some sort of sneaky wee sort of moves from time to time. So she gets called a ninja. <laughs> um, <coughs> anyway. <laughs> right, I might just put the cards up there and then place them in here when we're going to uh, do them. Um, just to stop that bit of shadow. But then again, I'm creating a shadow in here now as well, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, right. So I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play the game with. Um, right. I mean, I have only played two. I've had two tries at the. Just the one day thing, like I said. But um, apparently, with this game, the advanced rules are what make it kind of tack. Um, it does say that you, if you want to get the most out of the game, you need to use the advanced rules. It's only two pages worth, 26 and 27. They're the sort of last pages of the book, well, apart from the events. But um, but I haven't, I've just looked over them again, and also I've not tried any of them. So um, there's a chance we could make a right mess of this, to be honest. Um, and uh, there's also one optional rule, which is the night raids, which I figure. You know, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it all. Apparently, it's not meant to be a, such a brutal game. Um, <laughs> what I've seen, it's still quite challenging, I think. Uh, maybe uh, maybe once you've played it a few times, you start getting the hang of what you should be doing. So, um, yeah, I'm not, not so sure I'm going to make a great job of all that. But um, So, yeah, I think I will try and chuck all the rules in. And um, see how it goes. Like I say, this this could end up being a bit horrible and uh, not work first time. But I did think, well, I was going to set it up again and thought, well, I'll play another one day. Well, or will I try and play the whole thing? Add in the advanced rules before I start recording. And I thought, oh, what the heck. Um, I don't know. I kind of miss having the camera on. So let's... Let's just do it with a camera on and see how we go. Um, right, so I've got everything set up. Yeah, the cards are annoying me. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set them aside, actually. I don't, you don't need to see me drawing them or anything like that. And these are just... Uh, sorry, I maybe didn't explain it. These are... Uh, Stuka Joe created this... Which you might have heard of him. He does a lot of war games stuff, video stuff, pretty professionally done actually. Um, he created uh, these sequence of play cards. He's done a few things like this before, and some other things as well. Um, so sequence of play cards, but there's like oh thirty. What does it go up? It goes up to thirty three. So there must be thirty four cards in total. This being the reference card, like right? which is not so thirty three different steps that you go through and uh, all they're doing is just following the sequence of play which you can see on the oops, you can see on the on the map here eh? um, but this is very sort of limited information it's given you so most of the information is on his cards there are a couple that you do need to look elsewhere because obviously it's a card and it can only hold so much information but it's certainly far better than this um, and uh, I played my two games w with them. Um, <clears throat> I didn't actually have the cards printed out at the time, but I just had them on my tablet and looked through the cards individually. And um, it seemed to go uh, pretty smooth. Um, I did start skipping over them. Oh, hang on. Uh, right, I had to cut things uh, last night. That That's me being paused since last night, so... Um, just back to what I was talking. Yeah, so um, yeah, just looked over what I recorded. Not enough of what, but um, yeah, the cards. Sometimes uh, I got that used to what the next step was. Um, you kind of could skip through them quite easily. I, I'll, I'll try and not do that at first. Hopefully, so that you can you can see what I'm actually doing rather than me just saying right, I'm doing this, and you know, try and follow the card a little bit. 
Um, now, uh, yeah, the setup. Um, I don't believe it's any different. Um, I did I mean obviously with the one one day scenario, you didn't use any day cards or strategy cards. Strategy cards turn uh, appear on the second from the second turn onwards. I think. Um, and these are the event cards, which have a double use. You get two events, one for raid approach and one for target event or something. Raid event, something like that. And then these are your actual raids that you draw from randomly at the beginning um, of each uh, day, I'm guessing. Like I say, I've only played one day. so um, One unfortunate thing was, uh, it turns out I'm missing three cards... Um, I was going to ask on BGG if somebody could link the cards, but um, I figured they would try and find out uh, if I could get them replaced. And it was second chance games I got them got the game from. And uh, he's in the UK. I'll probably have heard of them, um, and maybe in Europe to be honest, because I think they they really deal with all the war games over here. I mean, maybe not the cheapest, but um, if there's anything that you do want and Europe, certainly in the UK, that's probably the place you're going to get. However, uh, I contacted them and um, they said they would see if they had any spares lying about of the three cards that I'm missing. It was, I want to say it was 56, 57 and 58 cards. Um, anyway, I, I, they got back to me saying they didn't have any spares, so they were getting in touch with Decision Games to see if they could get me some replacement. So, But fortunately... Um, it's it's one of this selection of cards, the 57, 50, uh, 56, 57, 58, they're in, they're in these, uh, let me just, let me just double check that, 50, uh, yeah, it goes up to 55 and then I'm missing 56, 57, 58, but I mean, I scoured all, all over for them and it was just when I was sweeping the cards, so it's not as if they were scattered anywhere else, so they're, they're definitely not here. But yeah, that, that selection of cards I just showed you, they don't actually come into the game until a certain date. No, um, I want to say until it's your fourth raid day. No, I'm maybe just making that up. Um, it'll probably tell you on the calendar cards. Let's see. Uh, let's see, he's got these on there. Eh? Daily planning. And the calendar cards. Read phase, daily planning. It must be the ones at the end, is it? Oh, um, oh no, I've put them, right, I've got them round the wrong way, that's why, that's right. Yeah, the calendar cards are near the end. Um, <coughs> Let's see if I can. Oh well, you know what? We'll get when we get to it. We'll get to it. You you do add the cards at a certain time, anyway. So, um, if I do happen to get to that time before I've had the well, if I if I do get replacement sent out to me, um, I'm not sure what I'll do about that. Whether there are three important cards that really you want randomised in there or not. Um, but well, fingers crossed they might they might get replacements out quicker than I think. You never know, and uh, hopefully get them added. Uh, anyway, so we can still play without that. Anyway, right. Um, so the setup, I think things are just set up the same. You can say just apart from setting up for player three. So. Yeah, so I've done that, mixed all the cards up. Um, yeah, and if it, if playing the prelude to Eagle Day, which is what I've done, you don't use the strategy cards. And then you place the units on the board. So there's 27 Hurricanes and... Or 27 Hurricane and Spitfire Squadron counters in their assigned sectors. And then we've got the, the German grouping... All um, 
in their boxes. Now there's two with what with what three and with what uh, two, um, and depending on what area, the majority up, up to now what I played, the majority were coming from with what two. In fact, in the, the second game I had there, in fact, I think in both games I only had one raid for with what three. So my guess is they're probably more for two, but I think it could be that once these other cards come into it, it might introduce more of the, the three. Um, uh, I want to say the three are maybe further in, maybe. Now this is this is the coast, obviously. This is the coast, very bottom of, <coughs> of Britain, of England. And uh, so the, the Germans are coming across the, the channel here and there's certain restrictions I think not not the game I played but the ME 109s have only a certain range so can't can't really go as far at certain times but we'll get around to that as well so um yeah, I, was, I wasn't going to leave the cards there Grant them out of the way. okay so and then you've got your priority table up there which is um Giving you the initial priorities of um, what your targets are going to be. So low priority is going to be cities and industry. Medium priority is airfields. And high priority is ports and radars. But they change from day to day, I think. Is it day to day? Could be. Um, so we've got that set up. And the... <coughs> got the detection marker up here but it, it it doesn't start here or anything it's not exactly on you've got you, your old dice and check modifiers and it'll end up somewhere along here the further this way the worse for us the lower the number uh, the better um with that one anyway um i want to say a lot of the time the lower number the better but it's not the case when you come to, come down to your bombing uh where you want the high number then so it's not all uh, that uh, the cotton marker goes on the six o'clock space. Well, at the moment, it depends. If we don't start at six o'clock, it'll move to wherever the first raid we've got. Um, I'm not sure about the relevance to starting. I've watched a few playthrough videos, there's maybe not that many out there for the eagle, maybe more for the lion, but um. Uh, Stuka Joe's one, for instance, when it, when it was when he shows you the cards, he for some reason doesn't start at six a.m. zero six hundred and starts at ten hundred, I think. But um, I've not seen any reason to that being a better thing or not. There is some event that stops you. No, I think it stops you from selecting six zero six hundred and zero eight hundred. I could be wrong with that. And then we've got these. <coughs> These um, I'll just put one down there. These are the time markers that you put on your for your raid. There's a zero six hundred one. You've got um, so many of them, and um, they all go up the top there in that big box along the top, and that's where your raids get put as well. Uh, the text marker anywhere on the te detection track, that's the one I told you about. So that's that's the uh, day marker in the 11th, oh it's 11th box. So that's down here, this is our turn track if you like. And it starts on August 11th. And um, these are certain replace, uh, reinforcements that come in for the Germans. Um, <clears throat> the British get some reinforcement as well, drawn from from a cup at certain times um, and this doesn't necessarily just jump on each turn so you, although you see there's a lot of boxing yank this, this is going to be a long game well I, I think it still is quite a long game but um, but it can jump two or three days at a time uh, when, when you move on to that I think it's when you draw the day card it'll tell you how many days move forward and um, I think the British get victory points for each day that gets moved. Obviously, the longer they last, the better it is for them. So, there's that. And then we've got the victory point marker, which is the way up uh, the top there. 
All right. And it starts on the British side, but in the zero box. So it's zero points. Um, we obviously we want negative points. So um, once if we get a point right away, we flip that over to its other side, and then um, sorry, flip it over to its German side, and then start scoring it as negative points. Um, so. Uh, that's it. We've got two cloud markers to set aside. That's depending on what the weather turns out to be. Um, again, this is on a daily daily dice roll. You've got with what two weather. The, the spatial is clear, but you can get patchy clouds or broken clouds. And it actually says patchy clouds on my one as well. In the rule book, it calls it. Um, I don't know if this if this was something that. Didn't get transferred from versions to versions, or if it was the counter that uh, they they call it. It still begins with a P. I can't remember the word now. Partly cloudy, partly cloudy, or partly clouds. Partly cloudy, it must be. Um, but it says patchy clouds on on my one. So, but that's that's the same thing. And then the other side, which is even worse. Well, it's worse than it's worse when we want to try and bomb broken clouds. But it can benefit you if you're being attacked by fighters and the like. So, and getting spotted as well. Um, if the clouds heavier, obviously it's going to be harder for them to spot you. Right? Why am I getting a a shake on the camera there. I wonder if that's coming through or not. Yeah, it looks a bit more stable now. I don't know if it. Yeah, but it's down there. I don't know if you if you can see that or not. I'm not quite sure what that's all about. I've not seen that before. It's, it's okay there. It's maybe something to do with the light. I don't know. It's really difficult to get the right light in for these kind of things to make it look. I mean, I, I'm not planning on making it look professional, but just okay viewable. I don't know if that shaking's coming through or not. If it is, it's kind of annoying. And uh, the times before I recorded on this table, I used my other phone. Um, hmm. Well, well, we'll persevere for now. Let's see. This is maybe just a wee trial video. Um, probably, I'll, I'll probably not actually um, do anything. Well, I might set up some of the raids. Well, yeah, we well, should be able to do that. Um, okay, and then we need a cup handy to um, to for the raid response, that is the British units that come and respond to our raids. Um, so many units go into that cup to start with, and then you might take um, so many back out again, and then you also do a check to see that once you've done that, if they actually make the response or they decide to just stand down and let you get on that. Um, I mean, there's pluses and minuses to that. If they don't respond, you've got a nice free raid, a nice free bomb, no... no um, no squadrons coming to intercept you. But it does mean that they hang about near, on their airfields and they're, the more <coughs> the more of them down there at the moment is... Um, and I think this is what you've got to try and balance out. This top board they call it up here is where all the units, if they take light losses, they go in here and when they've done, when they've been activated, they go in the land box, then the rearm box, then they come back out on the map. And it just cycles through like that. So the more of them you've got up there, the less of them you're going to have that can respond to you. And this is where you've got to try and plan your uh, plan your raids in a way that they're maybe not going to have any squadrons intercepting you for certain raids. If you can, you, know, you sort of sort of draw them in with another raid, and then yeah, um, like I say, there's. There is a bit of strategy involved. Uh, after you played a few games, I guess you get the hang of that. And, um, right, and there's there's a few markers down here, and these are for replacements. These are our fighter replacement points. And I just want to make sure I've got them in the right spot because I might have moved some of them. That's that's a living. That's right. Um, 
German Bormar is nine. So the Bormar one's under there, yeah. And then Hurricanes are nine. Yeah. And then Spitfires are seven. And also the British have experienced pilot points, which are at seven as well. Um, I think that's one of the things the British started struggling with was was their pilots, um, experienced pilots, losing all the pilots and having to send up pilots that were, you know, hadn't had much training at all and just get up there and get on with it. So um, if they run out, I think you start ending up with green units and it means they come in reduced, they come into the fight reduced rather than full strength if they're green. That's, again, something like that, but we'll get around to that. Um, but, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all the initial setup. So it was just the same. Um, like I say, I had shuffled these cards up initially anyway, but you don't, you don't use them in the in the sort of smaller game. Um, but everyone else has been shuffled up, ready for action. So, yeah, and I'll try and show you the charts as best I can. I've put the ones closer to here. Like I say, this is the combat results. So this one's more on here. Shift the run about. Yeah, this does take up a bit of space if you're trying to show these charts as well. Um, I'll move the cards back to there. Yeah, I should be able to get in there, but it's not so easy for me. I'm leaning across here to try and show them. But these are probably the two main ones. This is the results. What I done was I printed out the back sides. Obviously, the back side of this is actually, uh, yeah, that's right. The back side of this is this. So I printed out the back sides of all the three cards. There's only three player aid cards there, and the other three are obviously what's on the other side. Um, cause yeah, I found that one rather annoying. Cause you were you looked at this, had to find out where you were. Um, you know, you rolled the dice. You came to. Uh, whatever it was, your number of group and say there was four, and then the strength that you counted up, say it was 16 or something, so you come down here, it's 16, 15, 18, then you roll a dice, so it's in this column here, and it's one to six. So you roll a dice and say we got a four, then it's got three different columns there, and these are for German selector numbers A, B, C, and then... British selector numbers A, B, C. So you look along that column, uh, where was I? Was I here? Four, and you get an L, an A, and that's a dash, and then you, for the British, you get a D, a D, and an L, and that's why A, B, C, right? Now. So you have to look at that, and then, I mean, yeah, once you've played the game a few times, no doubt, you probably don't need to look at this box, but um, this would tell you what the letters mean. Um, well, I knew what the letters mean after not too long, but the actual result, if it was a disrupt result, you know, if it's a full group, then it went to end flight. If it's a reduced group, to end flight. And then if it's a full squadron, it tells you where, where they all go, what happens to them. Um, so it was quite handy. This I printed this out not long after starting the game because I didn't want to keep turning that o turning the other one over to look at the actual results and then turn it back over to... <laughs> to find what I was looking for. So um I think if uh, I think if anybody plays the game, certainly at first, they'll probably want to print this this page out in particular. And then the other ones are um well we've got the bombing table there, which is important when we get down to bombing. Uh, there's a couple of modifiers there. Um these are for the raid response to what um, to how many and where the the British bring their response units from uh, to intercept, um, and that, and then the other two up the top, maybe not so much used. Well, I've got the optional raid, night raid tables up there, so I dare say we all have to have a look at them if I'm playing with them. And then these other ones are kind of. I thought they were on the map. Um, this is a weather table. Major raid limit thing. Maybe they aren't on the map. No. It's maybe that they're on the, the information's on the cards at Stuka Joe's cards. Uh, um, I did think the weather was on the map, but maybe it's not. 
Well, no, I don't see it right enough. Anyway, if we need to look at them, we will, but... Right, so, okay, so let's just get started. But I'll, I'll look at, we'll have a look at this reference card just to show you how the cards uh, work. So, um, what have we got? So, yeah, a range of cards in a deck, numeric order, the number one card in the bottom face up, followed by the number two card on top. Uh, oh, yeah, and then flip the entire deck. So... Um, have I got them the right way around? Yeah, I do. So basically, you're turning over the first card, and it's going to be a one. I mean, it, it it doesn't really matter. It's not like there's any information that you try to hide here or anything like that. It's just to guide you through it. Um, yeah, the deck is now ready. Reference to rule section appear in brackets. Right, okay. Cards with a black header are used only if playing with optional night raid rules. Right, but we're going to do that. Text in boldface pertains to a specific card, deck, or other important information. Underlined text pertains to a specific table or chart to be consulted. Text in yellow highlight is, a, is an if-then instruction. If the condition in the yellow text applies, follow the rest of the instruction. Regular bullets denote steps to, f to, follow, to be followed in the segment. As per the game's rules, and then arrowed bullets, which I'm going to have to try and keep an eye out of for. There's one of my notes in one of the cards, I kind of cut it off at the bottom, I made a bit of a mess of it. But, um, so arrow bullets denote advanced rules that may apply during the segment. So I will need to come, come try and keep the rule book open to there because I haven't done them before and they come in at different times throughout the game. Um, I think there is certain ones that I need to look at even when I'm selecting my raid, so... Um, okay. Right, so... That's what we're going to do with these cards. So... Um, no, I don't want to do this. That's fine. Right, so we'll turn over the first card. Right, and we get German Knight Raid. This is card number one. German Night Raid Planning, which is an optional rule in 18.1. Um, so I haven't done this before, so in fact that's also one thing I've not set up. Should the, the Blenheim Night Fighter should be out on the map, I think. Right, let's get that rule looked at first. Yeah, so it does it does say during the setup for any scenario, place the five Blenheim squadrons and their sectors full side up and place the Blenheim replacement marker in the one space of the replacement track. Okay, so here they are here. So this one's for 410. So he goes in here. Um, 312 is up here. 110 down here 611 is over here and 511 just further up yeah. so that's the 5 Blenheim Night Fighters and then the replacement points marker goes down at, what was it 1 it said so 1 on the replacement track yeah ok ok so this is a table we look at first and it says on the card that Assigned to night raid boxes, a number of grouping within the range in the German night minimum maximum chart. And uh, I just wanted to bring up here to the chart, although I mean he's got it on the card, it's just this bit down the bottom. It says values indicate the minimum and maximum allowed German night raid assignments. A number of bomber grouping within this range must be assigned to night raids. So, and we are, um, so it's looking at cities, isn't it? So, Cities, industry, um, right, hang on, I'm not sure, I mean, it's got a, well, they're both, oh, cities are both, ah, right, I see, so if, if industry was medium and cities were low, you would be along at this column, right, so both cities and industry are low to start with, so we need a minimum of two, but we can have a maximum of four. 
Okay, the, I mean, that's the same information that does give you on that card there. Um, so it's got, and it's got to be noted down the bottom that Stuka's Junka 87s may not be assigned to night raids. And just looking at the rules there, you may assign Heinkel 111s, Junka 88s, and Dorney 17s to night raids. Junka 87s may not be assigned to night raids. Bombers in the night raid boxes may not be assigned to day raids. Night raid assignments may be split between with what, 2 and 3 as you see fit. Well, going with the experience that I've had in the two games, I think if I'm going to do this, I'd be better taking them from with what, 3 if it doesn't matter because um, I'm pretty sure there's more There's more comes up. Unless, unless it was just... Um, a coincidence that both games I got most of Luthor 2. I suppose I could look through the deck there and possibly find uh, <laughs> that's not the case. Eh? Um, so I can pick 2 to 4. Okay. Well, I'm actually saying that I'm going to pick from Luthor 3, but I don't know. Like I say, I've, I've not done the night raids before, so it does say you would put them up here, either on this side or that side. So, I would maybe... <laughs> yeah, there's sure, there's sure we're going to be a different... Well, you know what? We'll pick two and we'll pick... Well, we pick one from each. Just for the first sort of day, just to see how we get on. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to pick a... A Heinkel from Luther 3... And I'll pick uh, a Dorney 17 for Mofort 2. So we'll just go for that to start with, and then we can uh, we can see how it goes. Uh, and, and like I say, I might go through a, a couple of turns of this and realise I'm making a complete shambles of it all, and we could always just start again, but... Um, I'm hoping that will not be the case. But I suppose I've not done this before, and I'm not. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Eh? So it's like I'm not. Th that's what worries me about the advanced rules. But it, it, to be honest, I reckon I could play. And if I didn't use these optional night rules, I reckon if we didn't use that, I could quite comfortably play through the game. Um, just pretty much using the card, the the sequence of play cards. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying I wouldn't need to check rules. I would, but I'd be comfortable. The only one, only one rule I found uh, I made a mistake with um, was what one was it again? It was the raid response chart. Um, yeah, I'll show you what it was. Yeah, it was this table here. I'm, I'm get around it just for you people that. Have played the game. Um, these are all your mod die roll modifiers. So you, you roll a dice to see what units are going to respond and there's a you, you cross reference it with us eventually. But um, there's pluses and well there's a minus possibility as well if you've got other rays to can on that day. Um, but reading through these and it, it was the intelligence part and I check this one, it's uh, intelligence is limited or accurate and, oh no, sorry, the one before that, it says intelligence is accurate and raid has at least one bomber group. So yeah, that's a plus two. So most of the time you do have a, a, a bomber and accurate is quite a common, mm, well, I'm looking up there, it's not. Anyway, I found I had accurate quite a lot. So I was given a plus two for that, but then... If I was given the plus two for the being accurate, I was ignoring this box here, and that's wrong because they're two separate boxes. So I kind of thought it was looking at. I, I'm not sure why I read it that way. It was um, it was a bit daft because if you look at it, it does clearly say intelligence is accurate, and you've got at least one bomber, plus two. Intelligence is limited or accurate, and the raid has so many grouping. You would add another. You know, say you had ten grouping, you would add another plus two. So um, I kind of missed that one. If I was adding the plus two for that, I wasn't adding for that. So um, 
yeah, the two results I got <laughs> might have been uh, might have been worse for that fact. Um, but I suppose that's what practice sessions are all about. But I think that was the only rule that I, I misinterpreted. Of course, that's not set in stone. And I dare say that, um, you know, some things could go wrong and I maybe get pulled up for and pointed out that it should be done this way rather than that way. Um, but I just I just feel like um, trying to get these advanced rules in here is going to make the game a bit more interesting to, to look at. It's probably not something you should do first time playing it though, so... I don't know. It's just, it's, it's quite a long game. Uh, I couldn't see myself... I'm not so sure I could see myself playing it all through without advanced rules and then starting a game with advanced rules. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm starting to maybe doubt that if I should use them or not. Now, now what I could possibly do is, is carry on just now, set things up, and then... Maybe just going to upload this video just to see what people think and possibly if any is comment on if I should use the advanced rules or not. Um, you've got, that's it, so on pages 26 and 27, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven sections worth of rules. However, like 19.2 has raid requirements that talks, it's not just one rule, it says at least two Junka 87 grouping must be included in bomber assignments for each day. This requirement is lifted once at least three Jayu 87 grouping are in the light or heavy loss box. Because when they go in the loss box, I don't think they come back, if I remember my reading. So I think that's why that restriction is kind of lifted. Uh, but then you've got deep targets. If the target card draws, uh, include two or more valid target cards that reward double VPs for bombing. A raid must be planned against at least one such target. So there's quite a few of these sort of edge cases you've got to look at and... Um, Decide, I guess. Um, I'm not sure I've seen any of the two times. I'm wondering if they're maybe the cards that come in later. Um, <clears throat> but then the first 19.1 forward airfield target. Six airfield target cards allow raids against forward airfield targets. If planning a raid against a primary target on one of these cards, you may attack the forward airfield instead of the sector airfield named on the card by placing a forward airfield marker on it. And um, what's the relevance to that? Uh, if you read on, it says, apply the following special adjustments to raid against a forward airfield. Subtract two from the detection modifier. So, yeah, you're less likely to be detected, but, but then you treat an H bombing result against the primary target as a two result instead. So that's worse. And then if the forward airfield target card is middle warp, card 37, consider the raid to be in range of ME 109s. So I'm assuming that's a bonus to you as well. So maybe if you if you get that airfield that's worthwhile considering, then you can get your ME 109s. Um, yeah, that, that's one rule that I've not really come across. The, the range of these ME 109s, I'm not quite sure how that all works because there was not an issue with the the one day scenario thing you just chucked your ME 109s in that's fine um, in 19.4 edge of German fighter range ME 109 group and maybe assigned to hunt, strafe or close escort and raids against targets just beyond the range this includes all targets in 3-1, 4-1 and middle warp airfield in 4-10 there's no aid on the target cards for these targets all ME 109 group and a so assigned must be flipped to the reduced side when deployed in the maps raid display. So there you go. Yeah, I think the it tells you on the card if ME 109s are going to be within range. It tells you on the raid card. But like I say, when that first sort of small scenario at the beginning, you don't have any issues. So um, 
I guess these things, I'm just going to have to look at them all when they, they come. But you can see there is some things to consider within within a raid here. But right. uh, you know what? We'll, we'll try. We'll try and follow it rather than just play the basic game. Because I think it'll be a bit meatier. You know, I think it'll be... It'll bring a bit more to the game. Um, I suggested that it might be quite a repetitive game to 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 watch. Um, and uh, Martin had uh, said that he didn't feel it was repetitive to play, and I agree with that. It, it was the two games I had were quite enjoyable. Um, I guess I'm just thinking you you just go through that every, day after day after day. And is it a similar thing? But things are changing, you know. The the situation, the British units are changing. Of course, we are losing, taking losses. And then the bits that I didn't get to were the end of the day phase, the replacement points part, strategy cards I never got into because I never got into turn two. So there's a lot of other things to come into it. And if we add these um, advanced rules, it's going to be even, even better, I hope. Right, um, well, let's see if we can get the raid sort of... Looked at first, so um, we've done that. That's the first card done. The night raid thing. Now uh, the the British don't respond to that until further on. There's another step that brings them in. So that's that card done. Uh, if I put that face down or face up, I should put a face up, shouldn't I? Yeah. Right. So card number two, German strategy draw. Um, and it's good that he got he's got the rules section um, on the cards as well. That's really good. Um, however, it's, it does say beginning on August the twelfth. So we are on August eleventh. So this is just something that you skip first turn. It's one of the ones that you skip first turn. So we put that away, and then move on to card three. So raid target selection. So this is where we start doing something. Right. So draw ten target cards, and then. If Morning Haze is in effect, which must be some kind of event, and I've not seen it yet, you draw 8 cards and you do not use the 0600 or 0800 time markers. Um, and then we refer to the raid priority table on the map and discard any cards for a no raid target. Um, well, that is just above there and there. So, depending on the strate strategic value of the card, and depending on what the target is, would depend if it's a no raid, a minor raid, or a major raid. Now, if there's no raid, the cards get discarded. <clears throat> and then, oh, just moving back to Stuka Joe's card. Um, select any or all of the remaining cards as raid targets. Discard all cards not selected. So you can pick between the rest. And I've found that it is worthwhile picking at first I picked them all um but I also find that found out that minor raids are are sometimes not really worthy um uh I get the impression that they're they're probably worthwhile I mean, maybe not always skipping but uh, anyway and then so and then place the selected cards on the raid planning track using time markers and then it's got a reference to this. This is, like I say, what I'll need to watch. Forward airfield targets. So that comes in at 90.1. So we'll keep the book open at that part. And if we get any airfields that have got forward airfield targets, then we'll have a closer look at that rule. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, and we're just drawing 10 cards from, from this pile here. Uh, and I'll just give these another shuffle again because you can see on the top that it's got it had Lou Fort too. I mean, I had shuffled them, but you can't really avoid that. It's, um, I don't know if there's a reason for it. Could well be that the line version of the game needs to see that on the outside. Um, my guess is that that's probably the case. So, right, shuffle, 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 and then I'll cut, and then we'll go from there. Right. Right, we've still got Lufot too, but it's got South, I mean, they're, you know, there's obviously different, uh, um, yeah, there's an East, for instance. Right, so I think that, I don't think that's relevant to the Eagle game. So I'll draw the 10 cards. Okay, so I've drawn the 10 cards, um, and I will look, as I was drawing them there, I think there was only two Lufot 3 cards. Yeah, I've only got two out of the ten, so I 
think I think there must be more with Fort 2. Right, so we'll look here and I'll just move that along a little bit and we'll look at the cards um, as they come out. So and um, you know, I'll I'll only do this the first turn. I mean, I suppose a lot of you know how this work and don't really need to see this. But uh, now, hang on, I want to keep that. And so this is a city. This is a city, and it's got a strategic value of one. So I don't think this card's getting used. So there is cities, and they're in low priority. Strategic value one, no raid. Okay. So that card's not getting used right away. That that one's out. So we we don't have the option of that one. And um, that's an airfield with a strate strategic value of two. I struggle with that word. Eh? Um, so airfield's medium, strategic value two. Well, it's a minor raid. So that is one of the ones, like I say, that I wonder about there. They're great use if, if you should maybe skip them. Um, this one's an airfield with strategic value of three, so it's going to be a major raid. So that's probably, I'm probably going to do all the major raids. Um, now, this is a Wufort 3 one, so we do want to try and include the two Wufort 3s if we, think, if we can. Um, this is an industry target, which is low priority, strategic value of two, and oh, we're not even getting that. That's a no raid. No, oh, that's a pity. Um, next one is industry, strategic value of two, which is again a no raid. Next is industry, strategic value two. That's another we fought three card, and that's a no raid as well. Oh dear. Um, okay. Airfield strategic value two is a minor raid. So that's two minors and a <laughs> yeah, we kinda want these to be major raids, the last three cards. Big and Hull Airfield as strategic value three, so that's a major Radar Net four at Beachy Head is a strategic value two. Uh, the radar nets are high priority, so that's a major raid. Um, so that's good. And the last one, I kind of hope, will be a major. That's Big and Hill again. So Big and Hill Airfield Strategic Value of 3 is a major raid. So there we go. Um, well, it finished up all right. It was looking like we weren't getting enough of what to do at all there. So we've got four major targets, and um, can I show you down here? I don't think I can, really can I? No, it's, it's not so easy. Um, and the rest of these cards, so we're discarding four cards, so we've got six, six possible targets, two of which are minor raids. So my guess is I'll, I'll probably pass on one of the minor raids. Now they're all from Lufot 2. And this is the other reason that I might just even pass on both the minor raids because everyone's got to come from Wolf Fort 2. So um, you know, you're you're limited to what you can uh what you can bring. <laughs> the um you know, we've only got we've only got from these this selection of planes here. Uh and these are our bombers here. And these are our fighters, and we've got to try and spread that amongst the, these targets. Um, the fact that we've got two for Big and Hill... Now, hang on. What we need to also look is... Um, ah, yeah. There are forward targets. I see it. I see it on the card now. Okay, let's see if I can put these somewhere. Hang on. Okay, let's see if that works. Let's see. I'm not convinced about the light. These little bulbs up above probably would have made a difference right here. They're right above this area. So I'll see when I look back in the video footage and hopefully I can replace the bulbs. Um, yeah, so we've got one, two, three, four major raids and these are the two minor raids. Um, but I see there is three of these airfields. The two minor ones have the forward um, airfield target option. Um... 
this is just a may option. It's not a you have to do it. Um, and I'm not 100% sure on the, the whole benefits of it. Um, I think we definitely want to do the four major raids. Uh, and we have a radar net number four at Beachy Head, which is good to try and take out. If we can maybe damage that radar net, then Biggin Hill uses both the radar nets. Um, so we want to try and do that first. Um, well, before Biggin Hill, anyway. Um, I think my order for the major raids might go something like that. Though we'll maybe try and go for that airfield first, draw some fighters out, then maybe try and take the radar net, then go for Biggin Hill twice in the trot, something like that. Um, again, you're not going to see any great strategies here. I'm only going, what I've looked at, what I've tried, there's not an awful lot, so I'm sure some of you will be telling me the better way to, to have done it. Um, but, we shall see. Um, now this radar, this this uses radar net 4 as well, so if it did happen to take that out, that might be one to go for. Um, so I think what I'll do actually... Oh, yeah, we've got two for North Weald as well, haven't we? Um, no, I think I'll pass on that second North Weald one. Minor one. Um, and I think I might go for the five, where I'll put the, the minor one in, I'm not sure. And... So I'm I'm going to plan this out. Um, I'll I'll show you what I've done after I've done it, um, rather than me go through it probably because uh, there's a bit of thinking to do. You've got to place all your bombers on all your targets, right? I'm I'm not 100 percent sure I'm picking Kenway actually. I might just pick the four. This four doesn't seem like an awful lot. I feel like I would have preferred five. Um. So I might I might take this. Well, I'll I'll decide when I'm placing my bombers. So we've got to place our bombers on all of these all of these cards and pick what time of day we're going to run these raids. So I'll go and do that, and then we'll um we can I can tell you how I've decided what I've decided and whatever. <laughs> okay, that that was my initial thinking. Now I might I might alter things because there's a few things that could come in there. Um, I've also checked. One of the advanced rules is co-cert minimum, uh, co-escort minimum, 19.2 high command raided requirements. There's quite a few of these. Uh, briefly, we need some JU 87s. We need at least two of them within the raid for each day. Well, I'll put the two here in the minor raid. Um, deep targets. Uh, yeah, this is one that includes if it if it rewards double VPs. Um, I can't see any of that. I must see it actually on the card somewhere. Uh, I don't see anything that says it's double VPs. Um, so if if that if we had two or more of them, we must be planned at least against one such target. Uh, just looking at the ones I discarded then. Well, I think the double VP ones are. I get the feeling they're maybe in the advanced, the, the, the follow up cards, aren't they? Where are they, cards? What have I done with them? Right, they're over here. I'll just have a wee peek at them. Uh, just to really see where it says it on the card. Oh, there we go. So, uh, yeah, it mentions deep target, so it must be that. So, there you go. If, sorry, go there. Uh, see, it says deep and VP times two. So, that's where it is. So, we've got none, none cards like that. And it does look like they don't come in until later in the, in the game. And I did come across that rule. It does say it's after you've, after you've performed four raid days. Pretty sure it was that. Anyway, um, hopefully it's because Joe's got it on his cards, but if not, we'll try and keep track of that. Um, 
Yeah, and then one done. If the target cards drawn include two or more valid uh, target cards, with one done as a primary target, uh, well, we don't have any of them. And again, I'm just looking through the the cards that come in later on. They, they seem to be the ones that start targeting one done. So we don't have any of them. However, the last rule here is close escort minimum. It says you must assign a number of fighter group in to a close escort at least equal to half the number of bomber group in in the raid. This requirement is applied during raid deployment after satisfying requirements for channel patrol. So we've got to satisfy both of these then. Uh, but then it, then it says there is no penalty for failing to meet this requirement. But then no fighters will be available to hunt or strap. Um, I'm not sure I, I, I get that. If that means it's optional. No, it does say you must. Or does it mean if you've not got enough? My guess could be. I think that's maybe what it means. It says there's no penalty for failing to meet the requirement, but then no fighters will be available to hunt or strap. Um, ah, yeah. Because what it's saying is you wouldn't be able to put any any units in the hunt box. You wouldn't be able to put any because you've not got uh, any left. And the, There's some of this bit that confuses me a little bit. The hunt box, the patrol... Uh, not so much the hunt box. The close escort and the channel patrol box was kind of... That was confusing me a bit. Um... And I had to keep looking over it and still I find a little bit of a struggle with that. Um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, so anyway, this was my thinking. And what we've got is two Heinkels, two Dornays. So four, four bombers here. Now, with that... Um, well, let me just jump down to this box here. This is where the... This is where they, they all end up going, the fighters and the bombers. This is the sort of box that you go in. So all the bombers would go in here. But these two boxes need to be filled. Now, the channel patrol box, it says that um, depending on how many bombers you've got in the raid, you need ME109s on channel patrol. Well, four out of my five raids, I've all got between four and six. So I'm going to have to have two ME109s in this box before I can additionally put an ME109s in the hunt box. So, yeah, it, it becomes a bit tough that. Um, should I reduce maybe one or two of these raids to three so that I'm only, only having to have one? I think it's possible. I think, like I say, I've weighed out my initial. But because of this advanced rule as well, that close escort, well... What have I got? I've got three raids with four, so I'm going to have to have two ME110s. Now, can ME109s go in there as well, then? Close Escort. This is where uh, I'll get a little bit muddled up, but it does tell me... Right, place all bomber in the bomber box. Place all ME110 fighter group in, in the Close Escort or bomber box, as you see fit. So, yeah... And then, place ME109. If two or more bomber group in are in the bomber box, place ME109 in the channel patrol box as required by the channel patrol chart. You must meet this requirement before assigning ME109 group into other boxes. Uh, place all remaining ME109 group in the hunt, close escort box, or bomber box as you see fit. Oh, I see. So once you've, um, come, once you've satisfied this requirement, how many you need, then the rest of them can actually go and um, this box, this box, or this box. I mean, you're normally probably going to want to put them in the hunt box, but... Okay, right, I maybe wasn't quite clear on that one then. There you go. Um, yeah, so, and then moving back up to see what it is we have up there. Um, a little bit. So we've got four bombers here. We've got, I've chose, I had four at first, now I've upped it to six. This is the radar net. So I've got four Heinkels and two JU88s. 
Um, this is a minor read with the JU87, which is a requirement for that or, uh, ad um, advanced rule. And then four Dornier 17s for the first raid on Biggin Hill, and then two two Hankles and two Dornies in the last one. And now I've set them in that order, I've split them, I've not put two together. I know there's one of the, what is it, raid rendezvous checks which doesn't like you having two of the same Luftwaffe in the one time zone. So that's partly the reason I've split them up. Um, another reason is, the first time I played it, you, <clears throat> I only need to assign fighters to the first three time zones. I pick, whatever, first, whatever time zone I've got my first raid in, then the next the three time zones from there. So you could maybe skip one and not have one, but... Any the more time that goes on, the more the British units get back to action and come back. Um, so it's not just as simple as oh, I'll just leave a couple of hours out and that'll not do me any harm. Well, it kind of does. Um, but I found out my first time that I played, the way I had it. Once I got on to select, like I say, you only you only put fighters for the first three time zones, and then when it came down to me, then putting fighters on my fourth time zone, the fighters that I'd used hadn't come back yet. So, um, and what it, what it generally means is the fighters that I put on six o'clock, um, as long as they're um, full side up, they'll take three time zones to come back. So they'll come back at 8, 10, 12. They'll come back at 12 o'clock, which is when I'll be able to put them on here. However, if they were reduced, they don't come back for four times what, so they wouldn't come back until here. Um, so we just need to keep our fingers crossed that some of them, some of them at least, uh, come back full, so we can then assign them to there. So we only need fighters for these first three, so that is good, and we do have a load of ME 109s. Um, so, well, that's us now at that stage, isn't it? Like I say, I, I might adjust these because I think it is something that you need to look at and then possibly need to adjust. So, although I suppose the way this rules are written, I need to do this first. But I, I don't see there's any harm in me then looking at my fighters that I've got and then realising that, oh, wait now, I might need to adjust the bomb or selecting that. I, do, I don't think so. If, I'm, if that is breaking a rule somehow... Um, let me know. So I think we're done with this target. Oh, and that was the other thing. The forward airfield targets. So I had a look at that again. And the fact that an H result gets knocked down to a 2 is not a good thing. The fact that you subtract 2 from the detection modifier obviously is a good thing. And then the other good thing is if it's that middle wallop card, which isn't in the game yet. I think it's one of the later on ones. Or maybe it is. Oh, it's card number 37, so... I don't know, that means me I think there's only one. You consider the raid to be in range of ME109, so that's a benefit too, but I don't know if the the plus outside the, uh, like helps out with the minus there, because when you hit an airfield, if you hit it with an H result, you get additional dice roll. Mind you, you get additional dice roll enemy, don't you, Grant? Um... Airfields. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I suppose you do get an additional dice roll, but if, if, you, if you roll an H result, you get the chance to roll again, and if you roll a 6, then you cause damage to the control room. Um, I mean, okay, that means rolling two sixes in the trot, but, but with that advanced rule, if we use that, then the H wouldn't be treated as an H. It would be treated, treated as a 2. So I then wouldn't get the chance to damage the um, control room, I don't think. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to, because we do have one, two, yeah, two of the airfields, Kenway and, um, Kenway and Biggin Hill, have both, uh, the option to go forward airfield targets but uh, I won't do that 
Okay, so let me pick. Let me look at the first three. Um, the first three raids here, and see what fighters that I might want to add to these cards, um, and see if I might also adjust things. Um, the fact that we only need to add them to these three, and then we can worry about the other two raids later on. Um, it might be okay with what I've got. I don't know, maybe this is too... I, initially, I only had four bombers and upped it to six. Uh, I figured it'd be good to try and take that radar net out. Um, but that, that close escort minimum thing is kind of restrictive too. Whereas normally, I would probably only put one ME-110 on close escort. Well, this one, I'm going to actually have to put three. And two on that one, and... One on that one. Oh. Um. Yeah, that means I don't get any ME 109s then. With that. Unless I just use one bomber there. But I need to put that JU 87 somewhere else. Um. Well, I might do that then. The reason I put the two JU-87s together is they get a modifier, um, <clears throat> a dive bombing bonus. If all bomber grouping are JU-87s and the target is not a radar net, oh, it's not a radar net, is it? No. Oh. Shift them um, two columns to the right. Yeah, I need to watch that one. <laughs> It'd be silly to put it on and then it was a radar net. Uh, Well, I might, I might adjust. Uh, right, let me think. Yeah, that, that's kind of a strange one because the two rules kind of contradict, well, well, maybe contradict, but because I've got two bombers here, I'm required to have one ME109 um, on channel patrol. And oh, and I've sorry, I should have mentioned that a minor raid allows only three grouping to the raid. And uh, actually, what is our what is our uh, limit for the major raid? Um, is that in a box anywhere? Oh, yeah, it is. Um, it's up there, that one up the top there, top right. Um, and then it, it says uh, maximum of 16 when raid has major raid coordination strategy card or with FAFA at depletion level 1 or 2. Right, I don't know what that means. Well, it's obviously a strategy card. Depletion level, we'll get to that. I've not come across that yet. So um, the number of raids, well, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 raids. So the maximum raid size is... Uh, 14 okay so yeah we're, we're going to be fine with that but we do need to keep in mind that 14 and then and but minor raids only have a ma they have a maximum of three no matter what um so that kind of means that if i've got to put an me 109 on channel patrol but i also have to put one ME-110 on close escort. I guess this is the point where you where it says um, there's no penalty for failing that because I'd have to fail that I think if I'm putting two bombers on anyway. Unless it's maybe they're saying that I wouldn't be allowed to put two bombers. So you know what I'll do? I'll take off the JU-87. I'll take off. one of these but then I need to put two of them within the raid for the day don't I um I don't suppose it matters does it right I'll just I'll switch one of these Dorney 7 now You've also got to try and keep the same amount of letters. Right, I've got an A, B, and a C in there, so it does say that you're you're meant to balance them out. 
Um, as best you can, I think. Right, I'll put the J87, so this door nail won't be, won't be getting used then. Uh, <clears throat> unless I want to chuck it somewhere else, but I, I don't think I do. So that'll let me have an ME110 and an ME109 on this raid. So I don't know if maybe I had to do it that way because I'm only selecting one bomber. Oh no, hang on though. One bomber means I don't need any ME109s on channel patrol. Oh, that's cool then. So I can just have my ME110 close support and my ME109 in the hunt box then. That'll do. Okay. Right, I think that's going to be my setup. So let me find my fighters for these first three time slots then. Okay, um, right, I had to make a couple, or well, I had to make an alteration. Um, I wanted six ME109s. I've had to have three ME110s here because initially I had six bombers here. So I needed three of them. I wanted six of them. But six, 12, 15, I'm only allowed 14 in the raid. So I've taken one of the bombers away. So I've only got five bombers. I've got six ME109s and three ME110s for a total of 14, which is my, my limit. Um, here, um, I needed three... Well, actually, yeah, I only needed two ME110s there, but I put a third one in. Um, there's only four bombers. I put six ME109s again. Um, that is only 13 units. I do have two ME109s left, so I think I'll put the extra one in there. Um, yeah, might as well. So this has got 14, this has got 14. And then, of course, this one, well, you don't have three units, so I've got my bomber. And then an ME one ten for close escort, which is required, and um, an ME one hundred nine that isn't required, but I can put that in the hunt box. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Um, and what I should have actually done was move on to the next card, wasn't it? And the reason I didn't do it, I started talking about forward airfield targets. So we're, we're past this card. This was just to put your bombers... Uh, well, actually, it wasn't. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead already. Um, let's draw the next card, because this is probably to select your bombers, right? Sorry, I should have had this out. I know. Um, okay, so what we got here... Uh, assign at least one bomber group in to each raid. Move each raid from its airbase to a target card on the raid planning track. Now, this is the card I made a bit of a mess. I chopped a bit off the bottom and the side, to be honest. Uh, <clears throat> uh, major raid group in one minute. And if I looked here, this is where it would have tell me. So, we've got five raids in total. So, 14 was our maximum. But... Um, Joe's put this wee bit here, which is not on that chart. So it says minor raids are three, except in exception German major raid strategy card. Well, we've, we've not seen that, so we're not on any strategy cards yet. Uh, Morna Hayes is in effect. No target cards are assigned to 0600 and 0800. That's fine. High command requirements. Now, that's the bits that I've been reading about needing at least two JU-87s. Um, if there's deep targets, if London's on the card, and then the close escort minimum. So I think we'll follow the rules. Uh, and then the last bit, which has kind of been cut off, is 1943. It's about the Jabos, which are fighter bombers. Um, but it says starting September the 1st. So we've got a wee while before we need to um, worry about them. So so that was us done initially. And I know, like I say, I've jumped the gun a bit there. So that was the bombers uh, being placed. So then the next card would be... The fighters, I think. Yeah, so German a fighter assignment. So beginning with the earliest time segment to which you have assigned a raid. Now, this one kind of threw me at first. And I, a couple of videos I watched, I think I think they got this wrong. Unless, unless, of course, I'm getting it wrong. So beginning with the earliest time segment to which you have assigned a raid, assign fighter group into raids in the first three time segments of the day by moving a fighter group in from air bases to target cards um so 
and what I mean by um, maybe getting this one wrong is if you've let I mean it's straightforward in the case that I've set up because I've got 600 that's my first time of a raid so the next two time segments after that I can assign my fighters to so I assign fighters here here and here if however I say there was nothing I'd left a gap at 10 10 hundred hours and then moved this raid was wasn't starting to 1200 hours then you would only be assigning the raid the fighters to the first two two time slots because this time slot would be empty um and I think that's right um although I was seeing people skipping over that because they're thinking well I've not got fighters assigned to this time slot we, we would then move to the next one along but the way I read it is you look at the first one that you've got raids assigned for and then check the next two time segments after that. So, but let me know if I do have that wrong, but it doesn't matter in this case. We've got one assigned to six o'clock, one assigned to eight, one assigned to ten. They're the, they're the first three time slots. So, and bear in mind, you can, you can have a maximum of three raids per time slot. I've only chose to pick one for each. So, um, and that's when you're kind of restricting how many fighters because if I had three raids assigned to 8 o'clock, 0800 hours, then I would need to sign my fighters to 6 o'clock and then my fighters to the next three and within 8 o'clock and possibly even 10 o'clock if I had stuff. So you'd be running out of fighters, you know. Um, right, and then it's got the um, additional... Uh, sorry, the advanced rule there of edge of edge of ME nine ME one oh nine range, so it's ninety point four. Um it's it's just talking about that they may be assigned to targets beyond the range. There's some restrictions I think. Well they come in reduced if I go do that. We've not got any of them yet either. And again I think it's when we get to the extra cards, so Probably after um, these first four raid days that uh, we'll maybe start seeing some. It's, it shows it on the card. Something else maybe I didn't. I should have had a wee bit look at the cards. But we can get around to that. I mean, this is an airfield. Uh, it's an inland position. This is in the advanced row of being forward. This is where its sector is, 211. Strategic value, we've fought two. The south bit I don't think matters at all. Yeah, semi one to nines range, yes. So all these cards have a yes. That's the radar nets that ch that are supporting that position. And this value, oh, OCV, um, stands for something. <laughs> um, oh, is it not on that chart? No, it's um. It's basically the weather, uh, whatever the weather is, if the weather's clear, you lose the first number. If it's patchy, we use the middle number. And if it's broken, we use the third number. And that's a detection thing as well. I will eventually realise what it... Observer core value. There we are. That is on the map. It's the first, it's the first modifier you look at. Add the target card's observer core value for the current weather, clear, patchy, or broken. And it's in that order, like I just said, OCV. Um, it's, um, for this one, it's a one, a one and a zero, you know. So, But we'll get around to that when we go to check. Uh, so, yeah, and I'll show you the rest of the stuff on the cards that the, the fighters are kind of covering, but we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, so there's no ME109 situation where we need to look at um, that are out of range or that just yet. So that's that card finished. Uh, number five. So we're still in the daily planning phase. Um, okay, night patrol assignment. So this is the optional rule. This is something that I've not done then. Um, so it says, roll on British night patrol table to find the number of Blenheim squadrons assigned to night patrol. Move them from the map to the night patrol boxes on the tote board. Okay. Right, well, we'll... Where's my dice? Here. Right, it's these sixes we use for this game. Um, whether I'll show you all the dice rolls, I don't know, it might be... 
might get a bit of repair of that side of things. Um, right, well, let's just roll a dice first. Right, so we've got a three. So... Uh, die rolls a three. And we are August 11th to the 25th. So it's it's just a one. And then the sequence that you select them in... Uh, 6, 11, 3, 12, 1, 10, 4, 10, and 5, 11. So we're going to select from 6, 11. And there's, there's, um, oh, it's the Blenheims, aren't we? Yeah, okay. So we're only picking one. So this is a Blenheim that's in 6, 11. So we take him and we're putting him up to the Night Patrol box, which is, eh, not got that very well positioned, have I? Um, 611, there he is there That's and the reason That's his one, 611, that's the column For 611 stuff So he goes in this night patrol box And um, Yeah, basically that's that And I think we, I think it's not until the end Of the sort of The day that we then Do more about that um, Night patrol stuff Although I could be wrong, let's see what the next card does Still daily planning so, uh, card number seven, bomb damage repair, and we skip that on the first day of the scenario, so, good. So, I've not looked at that card yet either, because obviously I only played the one day. Uh, card number eight, now this is the last card of the daily planning phase. So, time of day and weather forecast. So we place a clock marker in the early space of the clock to which you have assigned a raid, which is 0600. So I've got the time marker in there. No worries there. Roll a dice and consult the weather table to determine today's weather in Lufot 2 and 3 areas. Place cloud markers if weather is... Uh, place cloud markers. If weather is clear, no markers placed. And Joe's got the wee table down here. So that's handy. We don't need to go up to that table up. Um, where is it? Yeah, there's a way up the top there, isn't it? So, um, uh, roll once for both areas on a patch or broken cloud result. Plus a cloud mark. Yeah, it just says the same. Okay, so we'll oops, throwing things about. Right, let's roll dice. Okay, we've got a six this time. Ooh, that's bad, I think. So we've got broken cloud and we fought two. And partly cloud and we fought three, so yeah, that's not good, I don't think, from the bombing point of view. So broken cloud and we fought two and part let's say it says partly cloud, but we it's Apache cloud marker, but it's the same. And we fought three, so yeah, well, um trickier for their detection and I think when it comes down to some of the uh, column shifts, yeah, the bombing table, broken cloud shifts two columns to the left, where patchy cloud shift one column on the left, that's not great. I don't know if it affects the combat results as well. You would think it maybe would, but it certainly, was, certainly affects the detection as well. Obviously, cloudy weather and whatever. Right, so that's that card done, and then we're going to be on uh, the raid phase. Which is card number nine, and this is where things start kicking off. This is where you cycle back to this card and uh, pick your raids and get into the, the, the good stuff. Um, but I think this video's went on long enough, so um, I'm going to have to cut it here. Um, I'm quite keen to come back and do a raid or two, though, just to keep things flowing, I think. Um, but I'll take a cut here, guys, and... Um, Maybe if I don't get back right away, because I could do with going and getting something to eat right now. Um, I'll maybe try and get this video uploaded. Uh, just in case there's some comments and some things that I'm getting horribly wrong <laughs> that need to be fixed before we get going. Um, also, your thoughts on the advanced rules, the night rules. I'd like to include them. I really would. It doesn't look like it's that complex, really. Um... Yes, I would be able to flow through it easier without having to look at them, but um, I would like to use them, I think. Um, but any comments you've got on that, let me know. Okay, I'll be back soon. Cheers.